In just a few weeks, Royal Caribbean's icon of the seas will set sail with her first guest. This is going to be the largest cruise ship in the world by a lot, not like other Oasis class ships where it's a few inches at a time. And Royal Caribbean is promising many really neat and new things, plus some Royal Caribbean staples. I'm really excited to be on the maiden voyage leaving on January 7th. So shameless plug, like, subscribe, ring the bell so you can follow along. What's our goal on board? Well, it's not just to be wowed by the biggest and newest thing out there, but I'm sure I will be, but because for me, Royal Caribbean has become a bit homogenous. Don't get me wrong, I like Royal Caribbean. I've sailed at least a dozen of their ships multiple times, and they do a great job. The thing is, the consistency that's important to a brand, it can also make things feel kind of old, especially to people who cruise a lot, and that's a good problem to have, I guess, right? To be honest, also some of the cool things that I've seen Royal do in the past, over time, they became really watered down. The same spirits at every bar, the same general feel so many places on their ships. So I'm genuinely hopeful that Icon of the Seas changes this and that it sets a new course for great new things at sea. But I also worry about how introducing these massive changes all at once could go wrong. That's why in this video, I want to talk about three things that I don't want to see Royal screw up on the new Icon of the Seas. This video is brought to you by the cruise experts over at Touring and Cruises, formerly known as Touring Plans Travel. Same people, same great service. If you want help from people with my experience and passion for cruising, more experience in some cases, but who are way more organized than I am, all while helping my channel, head to cruisehabit.com slash help and get a no obligation quote from the same people that help us travel smarter. Let's talk about the first thing that I don't want Royal to screw up on Icon. Number one, don't give me the same drinks with different views. Sure, everyone on a Caribbean cruise is going to go for a margarita or a pina colada at some point. I know I'm going to do that on the Maiden. Maybe if you see me, you could buy one for me. I also, though, like unique cocktails, smoky scotches, and rich tequilas. In the past, finding unique drinks on Royal Caribbean ships has not been easy. So while I appreciate the bamboo room on a couple of the ships and the mason jar on Wonder of the Seas, those are two venues with truly unique offerings. Most every other bar on Royal Caribbean has the same options and they're really limited. In fact, several years ago, I was chatting with someone from Royal Caribbean and I said it was a bit like a TGI Friday's bar menu. I know they can do better and that's what I told them. Part of this, I think, is Royal wanting to make sure that everything is available everywhere. And that makes sense, I get it. If you have a drink you really like at one bar, you wanna be able to get it at another. But if this was practical, then there would just be one really good restaurant in every town and it would have a massive menu. That's not reality. Different drinks need different spirits, different mixers, different garnishes, even glasses, and that's okay. I'd rather walk to a different bar for the drink I really want than stay put and have a compromise cocktail wherever I happen to be sitting. I should, I should trademark that name, that compromise cocktail, that was good. So will rye and bean have more than just espresso martinis? Let me get a decent tequila or a unique handmade margarita at Cantina Fresca. I know you can. Back when Sabor Mexican was a new thing on some of the ships, you did great, but it just didn't last. The 1400 Lobby Bar has cocktails inspired by the history of shipbuilding. I have no idea what that means, Royal Caribbean, but the Scots build some really great ships and they make really good whiskey. Sorry, Finland. So can I get an Isla Scotch there? Next, Royal. Don't drive the wedge between experiences even deeper than it is. See, the good news is when Oasis of the Seas came out a number of years ago, it was really revolutionary and no one had seen anything like it. So Royal wanted to show that off to the world. Understandably, they should. And that means that people going on 16 of the 26 ships today that aren't Oasis or Quantum class ships, Royal's newest until Icon, they're not getting the same experiences that they see in the commercials. Sure, the line has worked to make some killer upgrades to some of those ships with their Royal Amplification program, and that's great, I appreciate that. But obviously those upgrades can't bring all of the same experiences. Why do I mention this now? The problem could become even bigger as every ad starts to show off Icon of the Seas and then her sister ship, Star of the Seas. Hopefully, Royal finds that many of the things that guests love most about Icon of the Seas are things that they can actually bring to other ships. 
We could even get some of these things maybe this year with Utopia of the Seas, the newest Oasis-class ship, but only time will tell. Check out the links below, by the way, to join us on a Cruise Habit group cruise on Utopia this year. Royal has a real challenge, and if they can truly bring their older ships some of the new entertainment, dining, drinks, and even just themes that are promised on Icon, then it's a win for everyone and not just the fortunate folks able to sail the latest and greatest. Finally, Royal Caribbean, don't overrun the most iconic spots. This could be one of the biggest challenges, and only time will tell. But there are spots on Icon of the Seas that are constantly shown in renderings and previews for good reason. They look amazing. Right? The hideaway pool, it's a, an infinity pool suspended and it's all the way aft and it, there's a, supposed to be a beach club vibe with a DJ. It looks amazing. The, the views look incredible, maybe the best on the ship, but with like, I don't know, three or four day beds and not much room to hang out. How's that gonna work? Swim and Tonic is the largest swim up bar at sea. It looks like an amazing place, but for how many people? The swim up bar at Coco Cay is way larger and it's not always easy to get a seat. The Pearl looks really neat, but will everyone constantly be queuing up to take selfies in the renderings? I see people sitting down on the stairs and I think, yeah, not on those first couple sailings at very least. Brunch has become a staple of weekends for many. So how will Pier 7, a brunch spot in the thick of the stay all day neighborhood of Surfside work out? The Overlook Pods and the Aquadome look like an amazing place to sit and chat with friends, but is it gonna be like getting Packers tickets where you have to wait for someone to die? Hi dad, I made a sports reference. Are you proud of me now? In other words, while this ship is massive, many of the spots that look most appealing, the most, well, iconic spots, would seem a lot less magical if guests aren't evenly distributed on board. With a capacity of 7,600 guests, just 1% of them going to a single spot could totally ruin the appeal. Will Icon of the Seas blow us away? Well, probably. Perhaps the real question though, is what will the experience be both on Icon as well as the other ships a year from now, two years from now? Will the standard slip? Will offerings get homogenized for the sake of consistency at the cost of quality? I don't know. What I do know is that we're going to share as much of Icon of the Seas Maiden Voyage with you as we possibly can. So be sure to follow us on social media and here on YouTube. You can find all of our links below. If you want to sail with us, head to cruisehabit.com slash join us and find what ships we're sailing on in the future. I guess for the sake of science, we should probably add another icon sailing to that list, you know, so we can do future testing for research. It's science, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to talking ship with you again real soon.